Vikings and the Broncos under the lights on Sunday night. Thank you. On a cold night at the foot of the Rockies, EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to Empower Field at Mile High in Denver, Colorado. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup on tap as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Denver Broncos. And hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, we look at this Bronco team. They've been playing well, really well. Winners of five of their last seven, but losers last time out. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Vikings, the beat goes on, doesn't it? A perfect 10-0 to start the campaign. And it's a good locker room to be in, too. Guys don't show up on game day hoping to win. They expect to win. And so far, they... And off we go from Denver. Taking it about the one. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they will be let out by their rookie quarterback. And if you go by the numbers, he's had a Pro Bowl-type season. And maybe that's even selling him a little bit short. He's the NFL leader in touchdown passes to this point in the year. And with the end of the season not too far away, he's got his guys playing at a very high level. They go play action here on first down. He finds his man complete. It's Moss. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. An early statement on the game's first play. 18 yards and a first down. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. The numbers for him from a week ago. And Charles, how do you think he ran the football? I thought he definitely had his moments. I did think that they could have utilized him a little bit better, and I'm definitely going to keep an eye on him to see how they're going to use him this week. Second and five. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and ten as they've got things rolling on this drive. The throw over the middle taken in. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. That one goes for 24 yards. I'll give the rookie another one on this opening drive and a first down with it. A nice start, Charles, for the first-year passer. He's come out, made a few plays, nice plays to begin this contest. He certainly has, and if he finishes off this drive with a touchdown pass, I vote we don't call him rookie anymore. We'll move him right to veteran and continue from there. They'll look to throw now on first down. To the right side and complete to Jefferson. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And the Vikings are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the nine. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. They'll look to throw again. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, CD, you see some of the injuries that have popped up for this franchise and obviously hoping to get these guys back sooner rather than later. Yeah, and these guys, they've been hearing the mantra next man up since their Friday night light games in high school. It's three simple words, but they're absolutely perfect to use, and everyone has adopted them. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. A great effort there. His 25th touchdown. Tying Emmett Smith for the fifth most in one season. And the Vikings will claim the early lead as they're on the board first here tonight. I'll let you do the analysis, partner, but with every touchdown pass this young quarterback throws and with the success that his team has had, I just continue to be more and more impressed. Let's both do the analysis. Impressed. 
Aren't we both? Yeah. I mean, and why shouldn't we be? We've seen him improve throughout the year. We've seen him settle in now, and you can see the confidence of the team has grown. His confidence has grown. I think that everyone around this guy feels good about what they've seen. And it's also safe for him when he's driving home to turn on Sports Talk Radio. He's okay. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Well, the Broncos offense gets set to go to work and at the helm in his second season wearing orange and blue, Russell Wilson. There's a lot of good to watch in the game last week, wasn't there? I mean, he did throw two touchdown passes. That was impressive. And he's so close, isn't he? The three interceptions killed him and his team. That was costly. But if he just cleans that up a little bit, there's a reason for optimism with this team and this passer. Calling a gain of three on the play. And that will bring up second down. Hey, look at this defense for the Vikings. This crew against the pass, it's been a real struggle. Second from the bottom in the NFL, number 31. Take those rankings, throw them right out the window, <laughs> because this is what you prepare for. This is what you practice for. This is what you think about. The ultimate test, taking out the number one overall offense in the league. On third down, Wilson. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Here's Ethan Evans now. And last week in the loss, five punts as he gets this one away. This is taken at the 23. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return. And it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. They'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot to be in, but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I'll guarantee you, that's what they've discussed in their locker room, in their meeting rooms. Yeah, we know where we'd be if it ended today, but we also know it's not ending today. Right. So they've got to continue to play the type of ball that put them in the spot where they're number one in their conference. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. That one goes for 36 yards. What a first quarter he's been putting together. He scored the touchdown earlier, and he's in phase right out of the gate. Right now, he's playing with such confidence, he doesn't believe that they have an answer for him no matter what they do on defense. And here's another big play to prove his point. Now a play fake here on first down. Complete, Jefferson the target. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. From the 29, here's second and a couple. So Charles, you talk about this offense, how well they played. I mean, the defense too, really, but they're sitting at 10-0 now on the year. 4-0, and, and it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. A great play there, hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Vikings have taken a 13-0 first quarter lead. Charles, every time that he makes one of these plays, I, I think the front office, they get a bigger and bigger collective smile because they feel more confident that they have found their guy, their future at quarterback. And they should feel that way. It's obvious he's a big part of why they have such a good record this season. You're right about the bright future as well. And by association, a bright future for the franchise, too. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. From his end zone, here's Traymond Smith. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. They've been outplayed early, no question. Down 14-0 already as they come up first and 10. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. The numbers on the ground for Williams a week ago. 14 carries, 61 yards. When a winning streak stretches this far, you start to wonder if a team is truly unstoppable. And here's a guy who's been very much the legs that have helped drive this team to wins week after week. And even when teams have keyed on him and tried to slow him down, he's still gotten the job done enough to avoid a loss. 
Talking with him in pregame, though, he thinks that this week could be his biggest week yet. And Williams is going to pick up a Broncos first down as the tackle made up around the 33-yard line. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Hey, look at this defense for the Vikings. They were very good last week in the win over the Saints. No matter what coverage was called, they were in the hip pockets of the receivers all game long. I mean, they were running the routes with them. Turned out, they were right there on every single ball thrown and came away with five interceptions. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave them trying to convert on third and nine. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he's going to be taken down at the 39, clearly short of the first by a few yards. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. Ethan Evans on now to punt. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Justin Jefferson and the rest of this offense, they've got their helmets back on and they're ready for this next series. And CD, assuming he stays healthy, assuming the health, should get to that 1,000-yard mark pretty easily. And the best part of what he's done so far is it allows him and the team to relax their pursuit a little bit. Meaning, if they just have normal games, they'll get to the 1,000-yard mark. They don't have to force anything. But one of the reasons he's having the year he's having is what I call route-running arrogance. They think there's no one that can cover them. No matter how many people are put in, put in his direction, it just doesn't matter. He's going to find a way to beat them. And so far this year, he's done exactly that. He sure has. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. He punted five times in the win last week as this one's away. A 47-yard punt, maybe a couple on the return. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. And Denver getting set to take the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. They begin the drive with Williams. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. This defense for the Vikings, they were very good a week ago in that win over Minnesota. And how'd you like to be the quarterback reviewing the game tape from last week and seeing this defense on the spot on almost every snap? If the ball was in the air, they took it away. If the ball was popped free, they picked it up. Five takeaways in last week's game. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Brings up second and 10 at the 40-yard line. Here's Wilson. And his throw here's incomplete. And he's only hit on two of his first six passes. Time for a quick quarterback regroup here with a big third down coming up. From the gun on third down, Wilson. It's caught on the right side, Williams. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. They'll wind up losing three here on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. The Vikings head out to take over once again. They've got things going their way early. 14-0 lead and the football first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground through the middle of the field. 
How about this? He's to the 10. Touchdown, Vikings. A big play there. Hitting double digits with his 10th rushing touchdown on the year. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Boy, Charles, this offense is just so explosive. They lead the league in scoring. And another example of just how good they are right there on that play. Yeah, we often overstate about how explosive teams are, but this team is truly a threat to score on every snap, especially on the first few plays of any series. And a big strike like that, that only adds to their reputation as the league's best offense. This fielded right at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And the football going back over to the Denver Broncos. Well, CD, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here because now you're down three scores. And I know we're in the first half, but the way this offense hasn't been able to generate anything, you feel like they probably need to get something going on this drive, right? Yeah, and sometimes I overuse that this is an important possession but I think this has to be the possession where they come up with an answer because only a few teams in league history have ever come back from a four-score deficit. And if they don't score here, that's what they could be facing the next time they get the ball. Meanwhile, Wilson's throw caught here by Dulcich. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. They need 12 here. It's third down. To throw is Wilson. Man open, he's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. And he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. The Broncos send out their punter now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Averaging 50 yards a boot so far as this one's away. 49-yard punt, five on the return. And they will take over first and 10. So here are the Vikings to take over. They've got the lead yet again in this ball game with their winning streak right now sitting at 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. They're looking for Jefferson, but this is intercepted. Picked off by Kwan Williams. And he is going to get this one back to the 20-yard line. Well, it's not the first time we've seen him give one up here during his rookie season. And in this case, zone coverage forced him to stay. He's made some strides week to week in how he's handling the different type of coverages that he's seeing. But clearly, there's some growing still to do. Denver's offense ready to go again. But following the interception, they're set up nicely here, already inside the red zone, knocking on the door, if you will, first and ten. Up the middle, it's Williams. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Brings up third and four. Twenty-one, nothing. Our score after one. Second quarter about to begin from Denver. It's the Broncos in possession of the football. Well, they were handed great starting field position on this drive, but now they face a third and four. Now a tenth carry. Here's Williams, and he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. So it's pretty simple, partner. You pick up a turnover, set you up in excellent field position. The last thing you want to do is go three and out in this spot. Yeah, they would have had to settle for a field goal attempt, but now they keep those touchdown hope. Touchdown, Broncos! Greg Dulcich from eight yards out. And the Broncos are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. That seemed like a much-needed touchdown after 21 unanswered points to start the game. It's not often that you equate a football game to a golf tournament. 
but it's like you don't want to shoot yourself out of the tournament too early. So they needed that touchdown to make sure that they got an opportunity to not just get back into this game, but a chance to win it later if they continue to play well. The extra point by Sly is up and good, and they'll cut the lead to 21-7. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. We saw a lot of that a week ago defensively from him, AFC Defensive Player of the Week. Just always seems to be around the football. I like your observation there. Understands the game, understands positioning, can put himself in the right spot, and then make a play on the football. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Hawkinson going to go in motion. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. From the 38 now, here comes second and eight. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Out route to Jefferson, and he's got it. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 43. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And they'll employ the jumbo set now on second and one. They're gonna look to throw. That is caught by Josh Oliver, the former San Jose State Spartan. First target, first catch at a first down. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Blitz coming and down he goes. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down of the sack. Well, that's what they have to do more of defensively. Not just getting sacks, but they have to keep getting in his face. Not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving him up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. They'll look to throw. Throwing it a traffic there, and that's complete. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Back to throw here. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Chris Wormley in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this will remain a two-touchdown game. So an eight-play drive gets him down there, but play number nine, that winds up a missed field goal. And they definitely moved the ball well. That's a drive where you hate to come away with nothing. Well, we get another look now at this Broncos offense. Right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've got to be pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play the same tempo, and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. From just shy of midfield, here's second and five. Wilson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of, you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better. 
Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. The rushing numbers for Wilson maybe down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go. Showing it there, picking up the first down. Wilson. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, that's a big defensive stop there, and it takes away a lot of the momentum from the offense coming off that big completion to prior snap. Give big credit to the defense for bouncing back. So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. Now Wilson. And this is incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And now out comes Minnesota. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Ball on the 39. Here's second down and five. He'll drop to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. This defense can do some more of these types of plays. How about him reading it, driving on the football, and he's right there for the pass breakup. Now back to throw. And this one is incomplete. And what did we talk about them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. They'll send this away to the Rocky Mountain Knight, and it's a good one. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. Denver's offense now set to go. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. On second down, Williams. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. On third down, here's Williams. And he's taken down, but able to get this up to the 20-yard line. 56 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. That's how you get right up off of the map because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. So the previous play, a big help, as now they'll have it first and 10 up at the 20. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And they'll get to him quickly here as he'll get a yard, just a yard to the 22. Now second and nine. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? And he's going to be rolling down quickly after the catch up at the 45-yard line. 
23 yards to pick up there. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Now Wilson. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Oh, boy, hang on here. Injured player, and it's Russell Wilson. Certainly have to hope this is nothing major. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. And he'll go down shy of 40 at the 41. Four yards to pick up, first down. The busy night continues for Williams. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Here's a second and eight. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. And they'll fake the jet sweep, and instead of give up the middle to Williams. Chalk that up as a four-yard loss, and now it's third down. On running plays, linemen, of course, have their assignments. That's expected. But it's not often you're expecting to see a cornerback blitzing in run support and tackling the runner for a loss. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game. So you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. And he's going to miss this one wide to the left from distance. It's no good, and this will remain a two-touchdown game. I don't care who you are. 60 yards is a very ambitious attempt. Hard to make even in practice in the best of conditions. And now, worst of all, you have the other guys the ball to start their drive at midfield. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. From the 44 now, here's second and four. Here comes the blitz as they look to throw. This one brought in by Jefferson. And Jefferson's going to have the Vikings first down as he'll get this down to the 36. So from the 36 now, first and 10. He'll look to throw. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. That's caught by the big tight end, T.J. Hawkinson. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. Looking to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And the Broncos will take over on downs. So an interesting decision at this stage of the game to go for it. Do you think maybe that missed field goal earlier had anything to do with it? If it did, I'm really surprised because usually one miss is not enough to alter your game plan. My only thought is maybe he got hurt or maybe they just understand that it's not his day for some other reason we don't know right now. But in general situations, you run him back out there and let him have another chance. Stenham looking to escape, but he'll go down. They got him. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after.
sports. It's in the game. We welcome you back to the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. The busy night continues for what? Ethan Evans on now to punt. He'll send this away into the Rocky Mountain night, and it's a good one. And take it right on the 30. They'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. And it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. Justin Jefferson and the rest of this offense, they've got their helmets back on, and they're ready for this next series. And CD, assuming he stays healthy, assuming the health, should get to that 1,000-yard mark pretty easily. And the best part of what he's done so far is it allows him and the team to relax their pursuit a little bit. Meaning, if they just have normal games, they'll get to the 1,000-yard mark. They don't have to force anything. But one of the reasons he's having the year he's having is what I call route-running arrogance. They think there's no one that can cover them, no matter how many people are put in, put in his direction. It just doesn't matter. He's going to find a way to beat them. And so far this year, he's done exactly that. He sure has. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. They'll come up facing third and five. They'll look to throw here. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So we hit halftime with our visitors, the Vikings, taking the lead to the locker room. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. We'll begin up at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, where you see the final score there. Joe Burrow leading the way there as the win gets his guys back to 500 on the year. From there, we'll head down to Charlotte to check on the Panthers at home at Bank of America Stadium, and they were winners in their ball game over the visiting Dallas Cowboys. Adam Thielen, a touchdown catch in the victory. Finally, on Monday Night Football, one of the games of the year, the Super Bowl rematch, Eagles, Chiefs, Arrowhead, 7:15 Central Time. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. It'll be the Broncos getting the football first in this second half as they trail, and we are back underway. And Smith chooses not to return it, and they'll bring it out to the 25. And the Broncos offense set to begin this third quarter. And right out of the gate, they face what you think could be a pretty important drive. I would say so. You know, they're down two scores. That's not the end of the world. It wasn't the strongest of first halves, but for them to start calling back, they've got to start putting more pressure on that defense, start cutting into this deficit. You can't have three and outs and expect to get that done. So from the 36 now, first and 10. First and 10 at the 36 yard line. They try the left side here with Williams. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. 76 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Now carry number 20 of the game. Here's Williams. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. 
But you know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. Every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. They run it again with Williams. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. A loss of a yard brings up second and 11. At the 30 Out of the gun, Stidham. Caught left side, Williams. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and 10. Right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. To throw is Stidham. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Field goal unit and Joey Sly now. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. Sly able to put this one through. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So a good drive there to begin quarter number three, but they're only able to shave three points off the lead. Well, something's better than nothing, all right? They didn't play particularly well in the first half, but they definitely need him to step on the accelerator now and play a whole lot better. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. So here are the Vikings to take over. They've got the lead yet again in this ball game with their winning streak right now sitting at 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. So, Charles, you talk about this offense, how well they played. I mean, the defense, too, really. But they're sitting at 10-0 now on the year. 4-0, 5-0, that's nice. But once you start hitting double digits with these wins and no losses, I think the seriousness of the situation, it just has to ramp up. Yeah, when you do say 10-0, it can't scare you as a team. Just think about it this way. For most of the year, they've been planning to win their division and get to the playoffs. Now the playoffs are just about a four-ball conclusion. So now they're looking for Jefferson, but this is intercepted. Picked off by Quran Williams. And he is going to bring this back inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Well, it's not the first time we've seen him give one up here during his rookie season. And in this case, zone coverage forced the mistake. He's made some strides week to week, and now he's handling the different type of coverages that he's seeing. But clearly, there's some growing still to do. And the football going back over to the Denver Broncos. We're following the interception, they're set up nicely here, already inside the red zone, knocking on the door, if you will, first and 10. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. After the interception, here's Stidham. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. And to put it mildly, this is a tough spot defensively. They have to come right back out and defend their red zone. But how about that good first step towards forcing them to settle for at least three points? I think they're also thinking bigger right now. Imagine being able to stop them totally and change the momentum. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. They're backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Stidham, third down from the gun. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage. But I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. Field goal unit and Joey Sly now. This one from 46 yards out. Sly able to put this one through. So kind of disappointing there. I mean, yes, they get the three, but a starting field position like that, three's not what you're banking on. No, and you just have to wonder if you can afford to let chances like that continue to pass you by. You've got to find ways to get the ball to the end zone and put sixes on the scoreboard. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, 
you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. A handoff as they run the counter play. Oh, what a juke into space. He's on his way. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there. His 11th rushing touchdown on the year. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. And that run massively increased his production in this game, and now he's over 100 yards. And break out your calculator, partner, because his yards per carry went up it's significantly, right? It. Big time jaunt all the way to the end zone. Now the try here for the point after. And the lead is up to 15 now. The quick strike ability certainly intact there. Two plays, 80 yards to score it. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you. Now. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked off by Micah Parsons. And the return will stop right around the 25. And that's a ball that he is going to want to keep his first career interception in the National Football League. And I love what teams do when that happens. You bring the ball to the sideline, the equipment guy grabs it, he puts a piece of tape on it, writes on it so that you know what it is, and then they tuck it away so that you can have it for later and put it on your mantle. Pretty good deal for him right there. Now he's eager to get back out on the field and get his second one. They go play action here on first down. This is caught. Touchdown. A great play there. His 14th touchdown now on the year. And the Vikings have moved out in front by three touchdowns. And remember, partner, that's a rookie quarterback back there. Apparently, he's getting the hang of this NFL thing pretty quickly. And three touchdown passes. You're right, he looks comfortable. What are they doing, anything in particular? Well, they keep talking about making sure they're giving him plays that fit his talents and also maybe shrinking the playbook a little bit. They did tell us that. Bottom line, he's really good. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead opens up now to 22 points. From his end zone, here's Traymond Smith. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. And coming out now, the Broncos. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Here's Stidham. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Loss of 10 as multiple defenders get to him. Oh, you can just see it in their body language. They're starting to see victory on the horizon now. And if it comes to fruition, they got to give a game ball to the front seven. Defensive line has taken charge and controlled this game. Face a challenge of stopping this opposing offense, and they've done so with ease. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now it's Stidham. And that is incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. 
The punt team on now is from their end zone. They get it away. And taken at the 46. That'll go as a punt of 42, seven on the return. And the Vikings will be set up well as they take over in great field position, first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. They're just looking for more of the same. Great first half so far, good second half. And you know, sometimes I guess maybe, Charles, these coaches, they don't have to tell these guys much when they're rolling like they're rolling right now. You're exactly right. I've heard stories of some of the best coaches in, in our time or any time having grabbed their staffs at halftime and said, guys, they're playing really well. Don't go in there and give them a whole lot of stuff. Just pat them on the back, and essentially the speech at halftime is, let's go, guys, and that's it. Yeah, no one's upset the apple cart so far. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. They'll look to throw. That's to the sideline and incomplete. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. The Broncos are about set to go on offense. And this has not been their best half so far. They're down double digits already and now forced to operate from inside their own five. And what they have to do now is not curse their fate as much as focus on the task at hand. Inside their own five-yard line, they've got to be careful of taking care of the football and not turning it over for the defense to score additional points. They begin the drive with Williams. And he is going to lose yardage here. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Crop behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage will be found. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he'll take this up to about the seven or eight-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now Stidham. Short throw caught by Dulcich. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. Yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. On second down, here's Stidham. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And they are going to bring this one back. It's a fumble return, a scoop and score for the Vikings. Second time he's lost a fumble. This one hurts more. It's return for six. He's been under a lot of duress, hasn't he? pressured, hurried, harassed the whole game. Well, but the my, offensive line not giving him a lot of help. Not a lot of help, but the bottom yeah, line, he's got to take care of the football. Line. Extra point forthcoming. And that'll push the lead up to 29 now. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And Smith not going to bring it out, so it's a touchback. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD, and if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here and maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, Let's just say it's been unusual. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. 
Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. That's to the rookie, Marvin Mims. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Williams running left. He'll get this to about the 38. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. And you can tell just by looking at them that this offense is a frustrated unit. Things are really unraveling here, and as a head coach, time to earn your paycheck. You've got to find a way to keep it together as that brings up another fourth down. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Vikings head out to take over once again. They're just looking to do more of the same. They were good in the first half. They've extended their lead so far here in the second half. I don't know. They're just looking good on all, hitting on all cylinders right now. And sometimes that means a head coach who really has a finger on the pulse of the team may not have anything to say at all. May tell the rest of the coaches, just back it off a little bit. This team has it under control. I remember hearing about Bob Knight years ago in basketball, getting ready to give the final speech before the gold medal. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked off by Kareem Jackson. And the Broncos are going to have the short field here as they'll take over right at the 50. He's had a fantastic rookie season, made a lot of lovely throws, but that wasn't one of them. Well, we got to give him one, don't we? I mean, with the year he's having, a lot easier for he and his teammates to accept that throw because for the most part, what they've seen, it's been pretty sensational. So the Broncos coming out now. They'll have good field position at midfield following the turnover as they start with the first down here. From midfield now, here's Stidham. Got his man, it's Williams. And he's got this down to the 35. Denver has a first down on the 15-yard play. Final minute now in the third quarter. Stidham sets to throw on first. Open man, he completes it to Judy. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. On second down, Williams. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Here's Stidham to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have the Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now a first and 10 first at the down. 11. First and 10 at the 11. Up the middle, line. it's Williams. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. One yard gain brings up second and nine. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. From the gun, it's Stidham. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Here we go. Stenham on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. 
The Broncos unable to convert here on fourth. And the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. There's a glimpse of Justin Jefferson, the wide receiver, as he and the Minnesota Vikings return back here on offense. They might want to mix something up defensively because he's been shredding them a bit, hasn't he? That he has, and even with all the changes that you know are going on on the defensive side of the ball. And now the rookie's free. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. 201 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ball game. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Second down and a yard. On play action, they'll throw. Right side, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. And this is going to be another first down as he'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 44-yard line. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. They'll send a receiver in motion to the right. And he'll get it here on the jet sweep. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Now a second and 10. Second and 10 at the Broncos 45 yard line. He'll look to throw. And he's got this to Jefferson. And this is going to be another first down as he'll make the tackle at the Broncos 27 yard line. 18 yards the gain for number 18. Well, partner, nothing but praise for me for this offense. They have been tremendous all night long. They knew what they had to do to unlock the defense. And let's face it, this has been a master class in offensive football that we've been here to witness. They'll look to throw here on first down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll look to throw here. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. A great effort there. His second touchdown of the night. And the Vikings add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. Charles, that's a pretty good response from a rookie quarterback. He's had his struggles in this game, including the interception on the last drive, but there he takes him down the field and puts it in the end zone. I agree with everything you just said right there, and there's a silver lining to all of this, his resiliency, because let's face it, when things are going bad and you're a youngster, they often continue to go bad. But in his mind and his actions, he said this stops right here. And how about the positive play he just turned in? And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Denver's offense ready to go again. They've got some stuff to build on from that last drive because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so, and I think that they go out in this series determined for that not to happen again. In fact, they don't even want to get to a fourth down opportunity. They just want to make sure they get it done within the parameters that they've set for themselves. Run their offense, get it into the end zone. Yeah, I think a little bit of determination and a dash of anger. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Going to throw right side here, complete. And he's brought down. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Wilson. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Another pass attempt, another incompletion. You, you figure defensively, you're in the fourth quarter here, you've held the team under 100 yards passing. You've done your job. Especially in today's NFL, which is truly a pass-first league. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and 10. To throw is Wilson. And he's going to be 
sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. And that'll bring up fourth down on the big sack with a loss of five. They'll try and throw for him with Wilson. He'll air this one out for Mims. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And the Vikings are going to take over at their own 30-yard line. CD, this defense, man, at this rate, they're just having fun out there right now. And normally with this type of a lead, if you're a starter on defense, you're saying, hey, let the other guys play. But with this going on, no one wants to come out of the game. They all want their shot at picking off a pass. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And after the interception, they are sitting in an even better spot with the ball and a comfortable fourth quarter lead. In motion left comes Moss. Now a fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. Alex Singleton, a former Canadian League star, in on the stop. From the 31, here's a second and nine. At the 31-yard line. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. He's going to find Jefferson open downfield. And he's taken down right at the 45 yard line. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. They have the nice cushion. <laughs> they just want to pour it on right now, still throwing the football. And I know my background says, why do you need to do this? Just go ahead and run out the clock and get a win. But as many people pointed out to me, it's a video game, man. Go ahead and put the numbers up. Sportsmanship, not an issue. Exercise those fingers. How about that, partner? That happened in a hurry. Sudden, explosive, gets into the backfield and spills the play. And he was AFC Defensive Player of the Week last week because of plays just like that. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Josie Jewell, the linebacker, getting the sack. Partner, the Mike linebacker, the middle linebacker has so many different responsibilities. How excited do you think he was to get home with that blitz? Yeah, he wants a sack. He got it. The offense on third down tonight, it's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This will be third and a mile. He'll look to throw. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's what he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. Well, their passing attack, even though that one was incomplete, has been really sharp in this one. It's resulted in a lot of touchdowns, and it looks like they're not going to stop throwing the football until the very end of this one. Well, that will certainly make everyone involved on offense pretty happy because that gives them all a chance to pad their stats a bit. But as far as the actual need, you and I both know they can just run this clock out because this one, it was over a long time ago. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Got his man. It's Dulcich. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Off the draw. Here's Williams. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. He's tackled at the 40 yard line. The gain of nine brings up second and a yard. Now it's Wilson. Short throw caught by Dulcich. That'll put him at 96 yards receiving now for the game, and he's got a first down as well. And the Broncos first down. Now Wilson. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Here's second and 10. Now Wilson. And his throw is incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Now yet another incomplete. 
incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. Another pass attempt, another incompletion, and they're just a little over 100 yards passing here in this game, so defensively, pretty good job. Definitely, because they were never really able to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. It's a lot of credit to the defensive game plan and especially the execution. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. And that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And they just continue to roll right along, really. This has the looks of yet another victory as they hope to polish it off here in quarter number four. That's to about the 28, second down coming up. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. A three-yard gain on the play brings up third down. Back to throw. And that will be incomplete. We're up big here in the fourth quarter, up really big. That pass and incompletion, I, I don't think they needed the completion, but Charles, this is an offense right now that they're just having fun. They're clicking on all cylinders. Yeah, you're right. They didn't need a completion. They certainly don't need any more points, but they're not going to turn them down. They're going to continue to run what they have in their playbook, and they still want to run it efficiently. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Broncos take over. First down and 10. On first down, Wilson. Short throw caught by Dulcich. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Second down and four. There's Wilson to throw. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring it down. Well, this is getting ridiculous. Eight sacks now. That time, multiple guys get to it. It's third and long now for Wilson and the Broncos after that sack. Looking to throw. Wilson. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. And it's incomplete. And now we're down to 10 seconds. I know it's an emotional game, Charles. You can't do that. And when you get into your film sessions and you argue your case with your coaches, that's exactly what they say at the end. You just can't do it. It costs your team. Maybe a critical mistake at this juncture is now they've got a first and ten. Here's Wilson. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Now, one final throw here is incomplete, and that is how this one will come to an end. And as this defense walks off the field, they can do so with their heads held high. What a performance well, by, by the offense, too. I mean, really, Charles, just complete domination on both sides of the football here in this one. It certainly was, and I think both sides compete against each other all the time. You go to each other in practice, obviously your training camps, your offseason. But on game day, you both want to show your best. And I think that's what we saw for both the offense and the defense, a complete team victory. So for the Vikings, the perfect season remains intact as they move to 11-0 on the year. And they'll head back home next week to take on the Chicago Bears. Meanwhile, for the Broncos, it's a loss that'll drop them back to 500 through 10 games. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.